Think back to 2013, 10 years ago. Personally, I was still living in London working sales, and at least once a day, someone in the office would play What Does the Fox Say on the Bluetooth speaker that kept us all from jumping from a window. Nvidia released the first GTX Titan in 2013. It was essentially the 90-class GPU for the 700 generation, replacing the weird-ass 690 dual GPU card with something less bizarre. It also had an insane MSRP of $1,000, which is now the normal price for a high-end card, apparently. In 2015, the original Titan and the Titan Black were replaced by this, the Titan X. Then this was replaced by the Titan X Pascal, and finally, the Titan RTX. That was five years ago now, and we haven't heard a peep from Nvidia about bringing the Titan name back. In fact, they've done the exact opposite by releasing 90 cards again with the 30 and 4090. So what was so special about Titans? Special enough for me to buy one on eBay. To me, they represent a forward-looking Halo product like a Ford GT or the Porsche 918. Sure, this technology doesn't exist yet in something you can afford, but someday it will. Their prowess in productivity was not to be trifled with. When the original Titan released, it was THE video editor's GPU. In fact, it was often considered the best choice for a professional on a budget, since it significantly undercut the actual pro cars NVIDIA was selling at the time, while retaining superb performance. In that way, they justified their exorbitant prices, even if today $999 looks tame. RIP to anyone who bought a Titan RTX, though. That is a stupid amount of money to spend on a graphics card. What a disappointment, then, that eight years after this card launched, this ancient dinosaur has the same amount of VRAM and a wider memory bus than the RTX 4070. Look, I'm under no illusion that the 4070 wouldn't wipe the floor with this or any of the other Titans, but it really paints a picture of Nvidia's stagnation when it's taken eight years for still expensive mid-range cards to catch up to the high end for VRAM. Back to the Titan X. It's Strange to see a blower card nowadays. There are modern blower-style coolers for narrow little 1U servers and the like, of course. My work has a few quadro blowers inside encoding servers, but this is technically a gaming card, and the blower makes it look tiny. It's barely bigger than my RX 580 cute pet. It's also very weird they didn't give it a backplate, though. The RX 580 gets a backplate. Titan X? Nah, can't be bothered. Fundamentally, this is just a juiced-up GTX 980 Ti with doubled VRAM, going from 6 gigs to 12 gigs. And like I said, that puts it in VRAM parity with the 4070, and should help us keep up with modern games. It has DX12 support as well, unlike the old HD7850 that caused me so much grief in a previous video. I had absolutely no issues getting Resolve to work properly. In fact, it comes within spitting distance of the 2080 in my standard 4K render. Bear in mind, it's two generations behind the 2080. Now do you see what I was saying about video editing? That would be like a 2080 Ti or a Titan RTX going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the 4080, and that is definitely not happening. But let's forget all that and focus on gaming. How does it fare against some of the games I actually play? Well, that's strange. I can't get above 14 FPS in Halo. Yes! It felt pretty hot, perhaps it's overheating. I guess we'll tear it down, see if we can repaste it and restore that famous Titan performance. I bought this card untested and used, which is why it's in such poor shape and is also overheating. Bizarre. And that's the that's the cable that powers the uh, GTX logo on the side. Let's try and pull that out. Right, to be fair to uh, Nvidia, these are all metal. That's metal. <laughs> is that the back or the front of the graphics card? Answer in the comments below. But it is weird to see a high-end card with one kind of weak-looking fan on it. I guess let's try taking the back off, and there's usually a warranty sticker on one of these, so I reckon whoever owned this before me has taken this apart before. You ready for the reveal? Oh, it's still kind of liquid, kind of. I mean, it's pretty dry. It's not like completely, it's not completely dry. Look, there's some of my finger there.
There it is. GM 200. And now it is time for thermal paste. Also by Arctic. No, I'm not sponsored. I have only had incredibly scammy looking sponsor emails, so I haven't taken any of them. There we go. I look forward to everyone judging me for my thermal paste application in the comments. Maybe I should just censor it like uh, David does. The long one I've put in completely the wrong place. So let's just pull that off. Man goes back in and then bang. That's more like it. Now it's in the right place. I'm sure a backplate would go a long way to keeping these ones cool and also making the card look better, but you know, whatever. The Nvidia saved a few bucks, I suppose. Well, the good news is performance in Halo has doubled. The bad news is that two times 14 is 28. I guess it was overheating and throttling. Now, after I repasted it, peak temperatures are around 83, which is appropriate for a blower card like this. There must be some other bottleneck stopping me from getting good frame rates in Halo. Of course, I couldn't actually match the recordings perfectly because the Big Team Fiesta event ended weeks ago. Thanks, live service games. But still, 24 players on one big map mixed with how poorly Halo is built, and I guess that was just too much for this old card. I personally wouldn't call 30 to 40 FPS playable for a competitive shooter like Halo, but what about other more cinematic type games? Cyberpunk is actually just about to raise its minimum spec to a GTX 1060. And in theory, the Titan is significantly faster than a 1060. And wow, would you look at that? At medium settings with FSR set to quality at 1080p, this is excellent performance. There's no RT of course, but Cyberpunk is still a very pretty game with traditional lighting. And hey, this is about the performance I get on the 4080 when RT Overdrive is on. And they claim that's acceptable, so I will here too. And finally, lighter games work absolutely perfectly, as you'd expect. Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun is an amazing shooter with chunky pixels, jibbing demons, and a taunt button. Well worth the 22 bucks they want for it, and yeah, it runs flawlessly at 120 FPS on the 8 year old Titan. And yes, before you ask, using Movie Magic, I ran the Resolve encoding test after I repasted the card. So 11 minutes and 6 seconds is the best it can do encoding a 14 minute 4K60 video. So should you pick up a Titan X after all this time? Well, that depends. Despite beating the A750 in encoding, it's not a patch on the Arc's gaming performance. And of course, it doesn't support the latest NVIDIA tech like DLSS and RT. Perhaps if you edit video or do very VRAM heavy CAD work on your machine and never intend to game, and also you're on a proper shoestring budget, it might be worth it on eBay. Me personally, I just like knowing I have a Titan. I bought my first PC in 2012. So in my mind, the Titan is still the strongest and best video card ever made. And that's kind of why I miss them. I'll see you next time.